Good morning and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church in Potomac, Maryland on this Saturday in the 11th week after Trinity. It's a blessing to have you with us as we worship the Lord this day. You can follow our order of service using the attachment to this video. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us say together the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 66. You can find it in the attachment to this video or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 417, Psalm 66. O oh, be joyful in God, all ye lands, Sing praises unto the honor of his name. Make his praise to be glorious. Say unto God, O oh, how wonderful art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies bow down unto thee. For all the world shall worship thee, sing of thee, and praise thy name. O oh, come hither and behold the works of God. How wonderful he is in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot. There did we rejoice thereof. He ruleth with his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. 
and such as will not believe shall not be able to exalt themselves. O praise our God, ye peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holdeth our soul in life, and suffereth not our feet to slip. For thou, O God, hast proved us, thou also hast tried us, like as silver is tried. Thou broughtest us into the snare, and laidest trouble upon our loins. Thou sufferedst men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, and thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. I will go into thine house with burnt offerings, and will pay thee my vows, which I promised with my lips, and spake with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee fat burnt sacrifices with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks and goats. O oh, come hither and hearken, all ye that fear God, and I will tell you what he hath done for my soul. I called unto him with my mouth, and gave him praises with my tongue. If I incline unto wickedness with mine heart, the Lord will not hear me, but God hath heard me, and considered the voice of my prayer. Praise it be God, who hath not cast out my prayer, nor turned his mercy from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A lesson from the first book of Samuel. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, that he hath cut off all those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall be no punishment happen to thee for this thing. And said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and has become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thy hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David, because thou obeyedst not the voice of the Lord, nor executedst his fierce wrath upon Amalek, Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. 
and tomorrow shalt thou and all thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Here endeth the first lesson. For the canticle we say, Benedictus S. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, praised and exalted above all forever. A lesson from the Gospel of St. Luke. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, Jesus said, As for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Here endeth the second lesson. For the canticle we say, Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sin. Wherefore, in the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. For the might of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Savior. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for all who suffer in this pandemic, for doctors and nurses, for those who keep the public peace, for our leaders, those who work on a vaccine, for those who are unemployed and fearful for the future. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A lesson from the book of Ezekiel. Afterward he brought me to the gate, the gate facing east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the east, and the sound of his coming was like the sound of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory. And the vision I saw was like the vision which I had seen when he came to destroy the city. And like the vision which I had seen by the river Kebar. And I fell upon my face. As the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east, the Spirit lifted me and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. While the man was standing beside me, I heard one speaking to me out of the temple, and he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. And the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings by their harlotry, and by the dead bodies of their kings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then said Jesus to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so practice and observe whatever they tell you, but do not, but not what they do, for they preach but do not practice. They bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by men, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the, seat, the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and salutations in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by men. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brethren. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for you have one master, the Christ. He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson from the book of Ezekiel comes uh, as one small part of a great vision that God gives to Ezekiel of the temple renewed. And Ezekiel was himself a priest. He came from a long line of priests and he had a great love of the temple in Jerusalem. And yet he had seen it devastated, torn to the ground, uh, its altars flung down as part of the uh, destruction of the city by the Babylonians. And he, he took the pain of the loss of the house of God with him into uh, his exile. And in the exile, God revealed to him many visions. And the temple has a prominent place in many of them. Ezekiel is, of all of the great prophets, the, the man of the temple. And he, God promises that in the end, he will bring his people home, he will give them new leaders, and he will make his temple, fill it with his glory. He will make it beautiful and majestic and a source of blessing and joy to the whole world. As Christians, an important part of the message of Jesus that we affirm is that the temple by which God is present among us is no longer a place made by human hands but it is Christ himself, the one who uh, is born of the Virgin and filled with the Holy Spirit from his, the very beginning of his life. God and, hum and humanity united in one union as the sign of his mercy and love towards us and, and a life that into which we are all incorporated by baptism. So we become built up ourselves into a holy temple as as St. Peter says in his epistle, so that we may offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. The temple is no longer a place, but it is uh, God himself present through his son and in the fellowship of his saints who are to manifest forth his glory in the world, to show the world the way that God has set before us, to show the world love and humility and obedience and steadfastness and courage. In our gospel lesson, Jesus warns his disciples about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. They preach, he says, but they do not practice. They have a great reputation for piety and they speak all the right words, they wear the right clothes, but inside they are corrupt. He's saying to them, don't be like them. Don't seek spiritual wisdom merely because of the privilege it gives you. Don't seek to be acclaimed by others, but have only one Lord, Christ, the one who has given you your spiritual life and serve him humbly 
as his servants, for whoever in the kingdom would be first must be last of all and the servant of all. Jesus is speaking first here to his disciples and to those who exercise spiritual leadership in the church. He's speaking especially to pastors who should be people, men and women of uh, gracious and gentle hearts, ready to serve God, to be faithful to him in all things, not to seek the praise of men. But he's speaking also to all of us because we all have a share in the renewed life of his temple. We all are part of that body who is called to offer sacrifice and to humble ourselves and to be obedient fully to him. May we know his grace to do that with joy and fidelity this day and all the days of our life until we come to that temple in heaven where God dwells with his people forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me cart and do reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Francis, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through thy goodness we have this bread to walk, which earth is given in human hands, may it shall become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord God, of all creation, through thy goodness we have this wine to offer the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It shall become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Come, Almighty and Eternal God, the Sanctifier, and accept this sacrifice prepared for thy name.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Wherefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to repeat, to to say with me, an act of spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by thy life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray thee to come into my heart. I unite myself with thee and embrace thee with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from thee. Let me serve thee in this life until by thy grace I come to thy glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God.